For those of you who have heard of Tailwind over the last few years, Tailwind CSS, but have never gotten a chance to dig in, or at least maybe you have some exposure, but you just don't quote, get it. Uh, this video is really a must watch for any of you guys. Uh, Tailwind is an extraordinary uh, utility class library for CSS. And if the idea of CSS utility classes is new to you, you got to give me at least three minutes here to show you how awesome of a concept this is, whether you use Tailwind or not. Uh, because at a first glance, most people say, what's the point? I don't get it. But once you get it, oh, wow, you never want to go back to writing CSS the same way again, uh, especially in your component driven JavaScript apps. Like if you do React.js or or Vue.js applications, wow, Tailwind absolutely shines here and saves so much time. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, I'll show you the true basics, and then we'll dive a little bit deeper after that. So I'm going to start with a basic HTML file, uh, and all you have to do is add Tailwind CSS to get started. Now, this is not a production-worthy setup. Uh, Tailwind basically gives you thousands and thousands of classes, and then in production, all the ones you don't use get stripped out. And what these utility classes allow you to do is never go to a style sheet and write CSS. Instead, you use those utility classes to accomplish what you want to accomplish. So let's see. Uh, hi, make sure I got a live reloading setup. You see there's a nice CSS reset going on with Tailwind. Every single element has essentially no style to it. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to create a, uh, let's do a div with a class here. Let's add a background color to it. Tailwind gives me a bunch of different colors. I can go red 500, red 800, red 200, uh, green 200. And if I customize the config, then these colors can all be colors that actually come from my color palette for the app I'm working on. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna leave the default config here. Let's go back with that red 400 and let's do a text of white. Now, at first, you're probably thinking, how do I know what all these classes are? And at first, you'll want to have the documentation up when you start with Tailwind. Uh, that only lasts a couple hours, a couple days at the most, because how many CSS classes and styles do you really use throughout the day? For margins, it's pretty easy. Uh, let's add a padding of two. That's going to add a padding everywhere. Let's say we want padding of X and Y, so PX to be eight, so our left and right are gonna have a stronger one, and they go with the grid system, so two, four, six, eight, 12, 16, 32, 24, um, and again, those, those margins are configurable if you want them to be, which we'll get into a little later. Let's also say our margins are two, uh, let's say M, T, which is M top, or M, B, right? We have M, X, M, Y for X and Y, M, T, B, L, R for margin top left, bottom right. So we'll go on M, T of 12. Um, and it's just really, really fast. What you're noticing is I've not had to leave the HTML at all so far. Um, I'm able to just right away as I'm writing out the content, I can spit out the classes and have my style baked right in. Now, for some people, it drives them a little bit nuts at first that you have extra classes, but especially if you're in React land or working on component style work, What's incredible is if I want to move this to any other component, I literally just cut it out and then paste it where I want it. All the style moved with it. There is no CSS file. There is no CSS file anywhere. Um, and I've been able to build entire, very large scale applications with no CSS files, no cascading styles of any kind. It's really, really phenomenal. The speed is so fast. And the peace of mind and reusability you get, uh, it, it's just great. You focus on building features, not on figuring out how the CSS works. Uh, you also get responsiveness built in. So I can use MD, LG, XL. These are kind of predefined breakpoints. I could make my own if I wanted to in the config, you know, called super large. Uh, but what I can do here is, uh, let's say this margin top is 12. Uh, that's for mobile. Uh, but for medium screens, I want to make margin top of 24. Basically, all the classes you get, just prefix them with MD colon. And on large screens, I want to MT 35. Oh, let's go something big, 64. So now, as I expand my screen, boop, boop, it continues to bounce down. I have responsive stuff built in. Anything you can do, uh, I could also make the large have a different color. So when I go large, I get the black text. Da -da -da -da. Uh, anything you can automatically do with classes, you also get classes for the responsive styles. Uh, there's also hover styles. So if I want to go hover, BG is black. So now if I hover, it goes to black. And I can also add transitions. 
a duration of 500. That gives an automatic transition. Nice. Let's say I want that to be a little faster. 200 milliseconds, faster transition. Uh, just so many cool things you can do without really trying or thinking too much about it. Uh, so let's go ahead and build out a full layout. I'm not. I'm going to fast forward through a lot of the parts, uh, so there's nothing mundane happening, and I will stop and comment here and there. Uh, but let's show you just how fast and easy it is to build out a beautiful layout with Tailwind. All right, so the first thing we're going to want is a nice big header, maybe that's got some sort of hero background image, but for now we can use uh, Tailwind's gradient backgrounds, which are super nice. So this is going to be a gradient from the top left to the bottom right. There we go, we've got that nice gradient header that's 80 height, and I added flex columns so I can stack some things uh, top to bottom. Let's add maybe a logo, a menu, and a user menu in here. Okay, I've added my menu things up top. This will be my logo. It's got a width of 40. Uh, then flex one for the middle. So this is going to automatically uh, flex no matter how big the screen gets. And then this also has a fixed width of 40 here um, on the right. Uh, you can see that I've easily just say, hey, flex, item center, width full, and it automatically takes care of everything. So flex is super useful. I added flex column to this so I can now add some other things stacking, boom, boom, boom. Uh, so let's go ahead and have, add like a tagline and a button, and then we'll add a hero type of call out down below. Nice, there we go. Um, I added test white, let's say text of white. There we go, uh, nice and white. Let's add a button. Awesome, we've got a button here, and as you hover, the color changes a little bit. Uh, I did a shadow, let me on hover make the shadow go bigger. There we go, uh, that's a little bit big. Maybe I'll go shadow large instead of XL on hover. Nice, and just a quick little moment so you can see, I'm not really using anything fancy. I'm using text white, text size, uh, rounded background colors, uh, hover, duration, everything I already showed you, I'm just reusing those same ones. Okay, so I added font bold and then font light. Uh, so that way this has a bold font that has a skinny little light font. Uh, let's see, no, nothing else really. Text sizes, uh, shadow, that's a new one that I added, but really you can build these pretty cool layouts pretty fast with all the basic stuff you already know. Uh, let me go ahead and make like some sort of call out thing that overlaps here. It has a sort of negative margin to it. I'm gonna go down to the next section. Okay, I've added a hero call out here. Uh, we have flex, flex column. I have the items being centered. Uh, I have a negative margin here uh, on the top. I, that probably only has to have a negative margin on the top. Uh, let's see, uh, margin bottom is 10 pixels. And then I, I did this hover margin. I forgot that uh, that is not actually supported out of the box. You can configure that to work, but uh, that would be nice if when you kind of hovered over it, it slid up a little bit. You can configure that. And then the actual box just is rounded, white background. You can see it's all just kind of normal stuff. I gave it a border color, told it to be half width. Uh, so that way it's basically 50% width, no matter how big the screen gets. This is not super complex stuff. Let's go ahead and add a footer on here. And I feel like we've got our basic layout done in just a couple minutes. Ta-da, there we have our footer content. I, I told it to be a height of 80. Uh, normally there's enough content on a page to where the footer doesn't have to be big like that, but I went ahead and made it big. And you can see within just a few minutes, we have this really, really pretty modern looking layout. Uh, there's surprisingly little anything going on on the page, just a few lines, no CSS styles anywhere, right? So what we see right here is all there is. 
Let's say we wanted to abstract the header out into its own React component. I could just copy this and do header, and then literally paste that into the header component where I want it, and I'm not worrying about style sheets. I'm not worrying about anything. What you see is what you get. If you wanna come in and make tweaks, it's simple to come in and see exactly where the styles for this logo are coming from, or where are the styles for this thing coming from? They're right here next to the content. Uh, in, in the past, we would have said, that's a no-no. You need to separate your markup from your styles and have clean markup. But at the end of the day, what do you really want to accomplish? You want to get features done. You want to be able to troubleshoot features easily. Um, and all that is right here on this page if you use CSS utility classes. Uh, and honestly, I don't see a good argument why you wouldn't use Tailwind. It's just so simple and nice. So let's get into how you actually configure this Tailwind uh, CSS, uh, all these styles, these generated styles, how you configure these to your document. All right, well, there's definitely no one way that people bundle their CSS and package things for production. Uh, the, what we want to do across all platforms and deployment methods is really the same for Tailwind. We want to build our own version of this CSS file. That's where the classes are based on the colors we pick and the, the widths and the margins that we choose. And then we want to strip out all of the uh, styles, all the CSS classes that we are not using. So this is as small as possible. So to do that, let's go ahead and just open up and create an NPM package for this repo. And then we are going to install uh, three packages, Tailwind CSS, Post CSS, and Auto Prefixer. Okay, now we can run npx tailwind init. And this will create our tailwind config.js file. This is basically going to say, hey, anything you want to configure about Tailwind, go for it. Uh, so now we basically just have to run one command, which is npx tailwind uh, dash o, and then what we want our output file to be. So I'll just say tailwind.css. And it's going to generate a Tailwind CSS file from this configuration we have right here. Boom, there you go, the entire Tailwind CSS file file. And if I do uh, node environment equals production, then you can see that it will try to purge all the CSS styles that are not there. Now we've not provided a path for where all of our HTML is. Uh, but once we provide that path, it will strip out all the styles that are not used. Uh, so let's go ahead and customize this a little bit here. Uh, one great thing about the Tailwind documentation is it shows you how to customize each and every possible thing you want to do. So let's pull that up real quick. Okay, if I go here to documentation and colors, you can see all the lovely colors that they give us. And if we want to customize them, we just pick colors. So let's go ahead and say colors. I'll call this primary. Now let's make primary a nice fire engine red, this lovely, ugly color that no one would ever use in their website. Uh, another command that I can run here is I can run tailwind uh, W, which is going to watch for file changes. And whenever I hit save, then it's automatically going to regenerate my tailwind CSS file. Now I can incorporate my tailwind CSS file right here. And what I've done now is I've lost all my colors, uh, and, but what I do have is availability of my new colors. Uh, I usually don't like to do this. What I usually like to do is actually uh, say extend the colors. Uh, so let's actually change colors here with extend. I'm gonna move this out and move it in here. That way you get to keep all of the colors that I have built in. Um, and I also have my new color. So I have a new color called primary. Let's go over to index and let's make this learn more button have a BG of primary. And now there's that fire engine red that we are all expecting to know and love there. Uh, and that's kind of how you extend your colors. Same thing with your margins. Let's go over here to our margins. And you can see that it's called spacing. Uh, if you want to extend your default spacing scale, which is right here, uh, you can add anything of your own. You can customize what exists, override what exists, or add your own independent values. So let's say I needed some really large spacing for some reason. So now I have access to W slash massive. If I want to make something with massive, let's say this learn more button, you're going to be a width of massive. And of course, it's just, well, it's big. 
it's really big. So that's basically how you override or extend uh, your CSS styles. Uh, pretty, pretty simple. Last of all, let's go ahead and show you how you can go ahead and purge those unwanted styles. It's pretty simple. They already set up a purge option right here. So I can just go, uh, let's see, star. We're gonna say any HTML file is what we are going to purge. Let's see if anything happened here. Uh, let me see how many lines this had before purge. Let's see, we're looking at 190,000. 614 lines and let's go ahead and run our production ta-da and we're down to 798 lines way fewer styles a uh, tiny little css file compared to what it was so that's as simple as it gets in terms of wanting to purge things uh, you can also say that anything in your components if you're doing react you can say any JS file. We're also going to look at that. It's smart enough to look at your uh, JSX code. So that's Tailwind. That's CSS utility classes. Um, honestly, I'm never, ever, ever going back from using this. Watch me change my mind two years from now as something awesome and new comes out to replace it. But I highly encourage you to use Tailwind on your next project. You're just going to be really happy, not only when you start off the project, but a year afterwards when you're having to maintain this thing and you've forgotten all about how you set everything up. Uh, that's my favorite thing about Tailwind. You come back to a page, you instantly know what's going on. There's no guesswork. Uh, all the styles for this button are right there. Um, it's just really cool. So hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Have a good one. And as always, if you subscribe, you'll get notified first. And I always answer questions on my new videos in the next couple of days. So catch you guys around.